If you Google rarest comic books, a number of lists pop up. And this issue from 1963 keeps appearing. X-Men number one, the first appearance of our favorite mutant team. There's a problem though. This book ain't rare. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later. In this video, I did my research to give you accurate information about the top 10 rarest comic books according to CGC. I have a question. There are many books on CGC census with really low counts, not because they're rare, but because they're not valuable and people don't submit their books in for grading. How do you account for that? Good point, fine lad. But worry not. The books you see are all part of Overstreet's top comic books. And because they're valuable, it's much more likely that these books have been sent to CGC and have been put on the census. On a previous video, I showed you that I looked up each of these 220 books and looked one by one by one for their census numbers, and that's what you're gonna see today. Now for the main show. And when it comes to rarity, there is no comparison between the golden age and all other ages. In fact, there's not a book that makes the top 10 that's not from the golden age. Even books that are considered ultra rare don't make this list. Sorry, soups. With a scant 31 copies, at number 10, we have the most valuable ultra rare comic book, and that's Pep Comics number 22. Why is it so valuable, you might ask? Well, hidden in these pages is the first appearance of our favorite teenager, Archie. It's hard to believe that he first appeared in 1941. At number nine, we have another rocking book. It's Fantastic Comics number three, with merely 26 copies. Buffon's masterpiece of robots, wires, and trains was voted the third best cover among all Golden Age books. I'm skipping number eight because we have a tie at number seven. Wonder Comics number one has just shy of two dozen copies. Wonder Man only appeared once because DC rightfully claimed that the character looked a little too similar to the Man of Steel. Detective Comics number two also comes in at number seven with 23 copies as well. This book came out over two years before Tech 27 when Batman first graced the cover of this series. These early detectives are so tough. Number six is Famous Funny Series 1, number one, from 1934. It was the first comic book sold to the public. While most comic books of the Golden Age had big print runs, supposedly this one only started off with a print run of 35,000. The 15 remaining books on CGC Census should be considered historical artifacts. Let's swing on back to the book we opened with, X-Men number one. And if we look on CGC census, there are 5,660 copies. Or put another way, for every copy of Famous Funny series one number one, there are 400 copies of X-Men number one. To boot, of the 50 most valuable Silver Age comic books listed by Overstreet, X-Men number one literally has the most graded by CGC. If you think that including X-Men number one on a list of the rarest comic books is irresponsible, please give this video a like. It really does help the channel. Now let's get back to books that are actually rare. With only 13 copies, number five is an oddity. You would be forgiven if you thought this book was Marvel Mystery Comics number 33, but it's not. It's the much rarer Marvel Mystery Comics 132 pager. It shares the same cover, but has about twice as many pages. Plus, it costs 25 cents, not the ordinary 10 cents. The interior are from Captain America Comics number 22 and from Marvel Mystery Comics number 41. These interior pages are also printed in black and white. Some say that this book was only distributed in New York City. That would be cool because if you look on the cover, you can see the Empire State Building. At number four is another 132 page oddity, but this time it's Captain America. Similar to the book before it, but this one's a little bit rare at only 11 copies. But hold on, Keston, you keep talking about 132 pages. But when I look at the cover, I see 128 pages. What gives? Well, it depends if you count the covers as being part of the pages. If you look at the front cover, front and back, and the back cover, front and back, you get four pages. So 128 plus four equals 132. Let me give Heritage Auctions a quick shout out here because it's through their descriptions that I'm giving you a lot of the information about these rare books. Now we're at number three. And even if you're a big time collector and you've got major money to invest in comic books, 
good luck finding a copy. Some of these books don't appear up at auction for years and years and years. Speaking of which, number three is an absolute legend. Its existence wasn't even known to the comic book community until the late 1970s. It's none other than Motion Picture Funnies Weekly number one. This was a comic given away at a few movie theaters back in 1939. It's valuable because it's the first published appearance of a major Marvel character, and we're talking about the Submariner. And it predates Marvel Comics number one by a few months which is the first official appearance of the Submariner under the Marvel banner. We're going to skip number two because believe it or not, we have a tie at number one. I can almost count the number of copies of these ultra, ultra rare books on one hand. In fact, it just takes one additional finger. So each of these books only has six copies on census. First up is Green Giant Comics number one from 1940. And we're not talking about the leaf-covered dude who markets green beans in a can. Nope, we're talking about this obscure character. And the publisher is Pelican Productions. Never heard of them? I haven't either. This cover is also known for its spectacular art. The second book in the number one slot is more well-known and more valuable. We're talking about Double Action Comics number two. This book is legitimately cool. The title, Double Action, and that fight with the hippo, pretty epic. The cover, by the way, is a swipe of Adventure Comics number 37. And like a couple other ultra-rare comic books that we've talked about before, the interior consists of reprints. If you are fortunate enough to find any of the books on this list, more than likely they will be very low grade. In fact, most Golden Age books are between a 0.5 and a 4.0 out of 10. That's why I was so shocked to find out that there was a perfect Golden Age book graded a 10.0 out of 10 by CGC. If you want to learn more about these ultra high grade books, 9.9s and 10s, check out this video. Thanks so much for watching. Consider subscribing and hope to see you around real soon.